Keep it so up and good. Such a sexy man. Hey, you go, brother. Hello, hello. Here we are again. Yeah. You look good for like, what is it, seven years later or something? Something like that. Feels like 30 minutes. Later. Amazing. That's how good I feel. Okay. And then uh, the gorgeous and talented Miss Tricia Helfer. Good evening, Miss Austin, Miss Adler. Welcome back, Chris. It's so good to see you. Me too. Oh, my goodness. Wow. All right. And then next up, it's Superman himself, Mr. Tom Welland. You can call me the Uh, awesome. And your amazing master of ceremonies, that metaphys uh, metaphysical madman, the one and only Mr. Tom Ellis. <laughs> Let's give these guys a big welcome, everybody. Come on.
very good. Um, I, so I'm just going to use this opportunity to do a shameless plug. The last book I read was a brilliant novel called Washington Blank. Um, and if you haven't read it, give it a read because it, it really was fascinating. Um, but the, uh, Hulu have just done a nine part adaptation of it and I'm in it. So, I did. I did read the book first and it, it is a really brilliant book so I highly recommend it. Washington Black. There you go. Alright, thank you so much. Thank you. This is a book you've read before though, like when you were younger you were a fan of it, right? No, I've no. I've, it's, it's a relatively new novel, I think it's about six years old. But um, it's a historical fantasy piece. So. Uh, it's just, it's beautifully written and great characters. Anyway, there you go. And the Bible. Um, <laughs> I did start reading a book called Breathe, about proper, like Wim Hof breathing techniques. Yeah. I made it about to chapter two. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So Good morning. nice to see you. Um, Tom Ellis, um, I want to know what Lucifer said to Lamech when he was standing there looking at him. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> um, gosh, I mean, he basically told him exactly what was about to happen to him when he goes to hell. Um, and just was very sort of descriptive about it. <laughs> Um, and maybe I've changed it on several takes. Um, but I didn't take the opportunity to try and make Rob Benedict laugh. Because it was a bit of the wrong moment. But, um, yeah. Was it written or was it something that you, whatever you wanted to say? It was whatever I wanted to say. You know, you were never going to hear it. It was just, because it was part of the montage. You know there was going to be music over the top anyway. But, um, it was just, yeah, exactly what I wanted well, to eyes, do. The eyes spoke a lot. And, and the look on your face was very ominous. So, I just have been wondering that. Oh, well, there you go. But it's not for these people's ears. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Ellen. I'm from France. And my question is for Thomas. I would like to know if you know how to play piano. Um, if uh, you learned, or, and also um, if the, the songs were pre recorded, or if you, really, uh, you were really singing during. Uh, and what is your favorite song? <laughs> oh, that's three questions. <laughs> what? Um, God, I got in trouble when I in trouble, but people misunderstood what I meant when I said that I, I don't play the piano, but I'm, I'm musical Aww. enough to kind of learn the fingering of the bits. <laughs> Again, that's <laughs> not <laughs> I learned the appropriate where to place my packages. So that was that part of the audition process? <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, no. <laughs> so I kind of like well, if it was going to be on camera, I learned that bit. If you know what I mean. And then yes, it was me singing, but no, it wasn't me playing on the recordings. And we recorded it before, and then I had to put a mime to the track, basically. That's how it goes. I remember one time I went to set, and it was a piano, and it was going to play in the scene, and it was in between takes, and I walk on the set, and Tom's there. To me, he's playing the keys, and I'm like, great, he plays a piano. <laughs> talented him plays a piano. That was great. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Does that answer your three questions? And what was the question he asked Tom Welling that if there was a fight between uh, yesterday and you remember? Probably Wicked Game, because I wanted to do that. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. But it's a really cool, that's a great question because it's a really cool process. Like you get to go into the studio, like a legitimate music studio, and record with a, you know, a real producer and a real artist and lay down the tracks the way they do it professionally. You know, as if you were going to hear it on the radio, so it's a pretty cool process. It was. I, and it was lovely that, like, I felt like that I, I was the only person who got to do that for a long time. And then when we did the musical episode, everyone got to go in and record in the studio. It was so much fun. So much fun. Thank you. <laughs> she said, I hate Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 
keep you friendly. <laughs> It's such a lovely thing to watch because he, oh, we all know Kevin's an incredibly talented actor, but he is so, so brilliant as a director. Every actor loves working with him. So um, I don't know what the project would be. Tropic Thunder 2. <laughs> yeah, baby. I'm a dude dressed as a dude acting like a dude. <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude who played the other dude. Yeah, that's the thing is like, it doesn't even matter what the project is because you know you're going to be in good hands. It could be a comedy, it could be the serial killer drama. <laughs> um, you just, you know you're in good hands and you know you're gonna have a shorthand not only from working together as actors but also working together with him as a director on Lucifer and also on a short that you did. That's what I worked with you first as a director, I think. And then a couple episodes on Lucifer. So yeah, it would just be one of those experiences where you go in knowing he's got that part covered and you can go to him for anything. So whatever whatever the style of show, you know you're in good hands. I, I didn't work with Kevin when he's directing. I've seen a film that he directed, which was fantastic. I, I didn't even know he had done it when I watched it. Um, but I heard good things about you directing Lucifer, obviously. 
And you know, people, one of the things that I kind of carry around is you, you can't be in survival mode and creative mode at the same time. And a lot of times what you want out of a director is somebody who can take care of everything around you so you can focus and be creative in a safe environment to fail and to have you back. Because if you're worried, if you're scared to open yourself up, that's the, you can't be creative. And from what I understand, you, you created that for, for your cast. And I know even behind their back, they say good things about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, every, every, uh, every director talks about like, uh, what their superpower is. And I think my superpower as a director is my ability to be one of, one of us. I'm an actor, first and foremost. And that's my superpower is my ability to communicate, uh, and understand where where you're where you're coming from because it's such a sensitive part of what we do. Everything's internal, right? Um, so I think that's my my superpower. And I think it's great. That was a great question because, guys, I have a film that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I'm a theater director too. I came out of stage management. Oh, right on. <coughs> Fantastic. Thank you for your question. Uh, next over here. Hi. Um, ahead. My name is Avi. And um, my question is, is um, for Tom, um, how would you feel, like at the end you saw Charlotte and Dan, and if they got married, how would you feel of Dan being your stepdad? <laughs> I'll tell you how Dan would feel. <laughs> oh God, I'd have to get over it, wouldn't I? Um, well, Dan's a great dad. He really is a great dad. Uh, so, I'd, you know, I'd have to kind of suck it up, but it'd be weird. It'd be really weird, I'm not going to lie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name's Rebel. I have a question for Tom. Um, you know, I've got the gong from Tom Ellis. I love that you're just rush, so I don't know if you've done some problems. But I wonder what was your favorite oh, that you put in the show that they kept, and what one do you wish they kept in that they did? Favorite? Im just improv. Oh, improv. In Rush? Uh, in, in Rush or in Lucifer? In Rush. First of all, Tom's a freaking master of improv. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can remember showing up on set on days uh, and, and uh, watching uh, rehearsal and setting up, and every time the director or the, the first AD or whoever it is would be like, don't worry, just put in the scene, Tom's gonna do something great. <laughs> he won't tell you what it is, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> you can't, I couldn't tell half the time if he was saying his lines or not. <laughs> because it all, comes, it all comes so naturally. He could have been doing his actual lines, I just, you get lost in it. And what I loved about my character, my whole thing was not getting caught up in any of that bullshit. <laughs> that was like, so I, I just got to kind of watch and be like, yeah, anyway, uh, I got other things to do, so it was helpful. <laughs> How's the kiss? <laughs> that was not good Scratchy. <laughs> All the rehearsal, you're like, we need to rehearse this over and over. I was like, come on, man. You're a professional. It'd be quite velcro-y now, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's a surprise as well. Just get stuck. I will say, that was, a, that was my favorite episode that I did, and it was a lot of fun to do that because he did a lot of improv, like, Trying to hold my hand, where even when you couldn't see it, slapping me on the butt. Or, you know, it was just stuff that really pissed Pierce off. And I will say that there was a big build up to that, to the kiss. And, uh, you know, we, we nailed it first day. And, we were, uh, and I remember being like, good, we got it, right? We got it, we got it. And Tom goes, oh, I'd like another, please. And, uh, and all, the, all the other background performers just start dying laughing. It was really fun. That was good. Um, gosh, oh, I mean, I, I, like, I was given a lot of license to, to mess around because it was a type of character that we could do that. Um, gosh, off the top of my head, I can't really think, but I think that I just was very lucky to, to, to be like allowed to do that because I know a lot of sets, you're not allowed to do that. But um, I think also because the uh, showrunners were American and I'm not, uh, I was able to introduce quite a lot of British phrases that no one had ever heard before into it. And what I did enjoy doing in the first few seasons when we were on Fox was trying to get stuff in that I knew was rude. <laughs> and if they knew what it meant, it wouldn't be allowed in. But standards, American standards, American practices. Standards. Yeah, Cash. exactly. They haven't got any idea what a wank is. Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, stuff like that. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Kathy from Boston. 
much. And my question is for Tom Ellis. I know you come from a family of ministers. How did they feel about you playing the devil? Well, we don't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I do, I do come from family of ministers. Um, and, I mean, they treated this as if it was any other job. I think some people uh, in the sensational world of media sometimes would like to make a big deal about that. But I, you know, I did grow up in the church, but I grew up in my, what I thought was quite a cool way of being in the church, where we talked about all the good aspects of Christianity, or any religion really, which is about tolerance and forgiveness and understanding and kindness and all of those things. Um, so, my, you know, my, my family were, they just were very supportive of, of it being a job. My mum and dad don't watch it, but not out of protest, it's just not their cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Some people were not satisfied with that ending, and I do apologise. <laughs> um, but I wasn't, I, if it had been the other way around, I wasn't satisfied with that. I thought it was a bit too convenient, to be honest. 
There you go. No one's ever satisfied when a show ends, no matter what happens. Trust me. <laughs> can't please them all. Hi. Um, I also think it's slightly dangerous to write for the viewers. I think you want the viewers to come along with you, but you can't listen to what people want and then write to that because then it becomes a diluted version of what your story is. Yeah. 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 Hi, I'm, I'm Cheryl from Canada, and you're all fabulous and lovely. And I'm just wondering, because um, you had such a good chemistry with Lauren German, if any of you are going to be able to do another project with her sometime in the future, because it's quite obvious how great she is, and we would love to see you work with her again in some project. And anyone has anyone doing anything with her soon? I would love to work with her forever. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's nothing planned, but yeah, if, if, if it was presented to me and without even hesitating, I'd say yes. Yeah, I think I think the same. It's. Um, I don't know of anything that she's got going on right now, and, and uh, you know, I think it's, for all of us, it's a, it's a little bit of a, this business is kind of crazy, and your life can change in a minute, or some another opportunity dis disappears or comes along. So I don't know of anything with her. Uh, I think she's taking coming a little up. bit of a break, right? She, she she's is, taking yeah. A bit of a break and she's doing a lot of art. art. Yeah. yeah, she's a brilliant artist. Um, and uh, but yeah, if the opportunity arose, absolutely. Tommy, would you work with her? Well, <laughs> it depends on the project. Um, I was actually just talking to her yesterday, her, uh, trying to get her her uh, her friend to play uh, Lisa. Um, but um, no, she's fantastic. She's so much fun. Instantly, right? when I got on set, all these guys are so much fun. I find that you know, I, I think when I was younger, I, I, I thought I was like picky about who I wanted to work with and whatnot, but I think I just really wanted to work. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of come around that I just want to work with people who I can enjoy and actually be around and, and be creative with. And Lauren's definitely one of those people. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's, we are, she's, uh, and anyone will testify, she is quite possibly one of the funniest people certainly I've ever met. And vulgar. <laughs> and vulgar. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. Lauren, you're on set. There's like cameras rolling. She's like, I know! I don't know. No, surprised you get in more trouble, actually. I, yeah. <laughs> well, Especially remember. the time period that was going on. There was one I was like, I know. Lauren, <laughs> she did a little practical joke. There was one time she got into, well, she, she kind of got into a joke for this. Yeah. She had to go in it. She had to go into the producer's office. Oh. And get to talking to, but they were all laughing about giving that talking to. She wasn't, she wasn't taking the talking to seriously. It's like, when you're, it's like when your kid's done something that you think is really funny, but you're meant to discipline them. And she'd, um, she donned a pair of camel toe underwear that she bought on Amazon and decided to wear it in a rehearsal of your episode. On the outside of her outfit. On the outside of her outfit, because she managed to hide it with a big coat until the camera stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, and then, uh, you know, we had to go through the disciplinary process. <laughs> so you can't wear camel toe underwear to cook. It That's appeared, she's on break. It, 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 it appeared in the makeup trailer first, we were all crying laughing, and that's where we thought it was going to end. There's one thing you know about Lauren, it never ends in the makeup trailer. No. <laughs> that's a nickname that'll stick. <laughs> hey! Uh, Thank you. There you go. But we'd all love to work with her again, for sure. We have time for one more question. Hoodie! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, the question is for all the cast. What are you the most proud of about the show? And to Tom Walling, how do you feel about breaking the Superman curse? <laughs> well, the, the curse thing, I, the, way, the way I convinced myself was I didn't really wear the suit. And that's the curse, because I think what happened in the old days is when you wear the suit, the people, that's all they can picture you in. Partly, but I think that there's so much stuff out there now, it's not so much of a deal. Um, sorry, what was the first question? <laughs> what are you the most proud of about the show? Oh, me? Um, I just had a great time doing it. I, I knew the show, I watched the show, and be able to be a part of it, and 
the Chapel Warren Brothers lot, which was like 10 minutes from my house. It never happened <laughs> ever again. Um, and it's such a warm and, and great cast. I, I just, the only thing I'm not happy about is when, when you got shot, they, there's a, the, the way the camera shows me, like the, the gun goes off and then you fall and it goes back to me and it's just, it looks so awkward. I'm like, uh. <laughs> and partly is because I thought there was going to be another shot. You know, like I just didn't ask, but I figured like, ah, oh, this is kind of why they're, you know, they're not going to be here for the exit. And so I had, I guess, maybe I was being irresponsible and I hadn't thought about how my exit. I just figured I was going to, all right, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to see it, I'm going to go. Well, <laughs> In the instant of me going, I forgot which direction. <laughs> like, just, duh, right? No matter what, go to the right. You know what I mean? Just tell yourself that so you don't think about it. And so I shoot, and then this, and I was like, oh, whoa, what'd they say? And I just leave. And so I, I really am sad about that moment. And I'll tell you a quick story is when, when my character died, it was like the last thing we shot. It was one of the last things we all shot. My wife was there, her brother was there, they were watching, it was great. And I remember my wife's brother being like, dude, it sucks, she's dying, huh? I'm like, dude, I'm gonna bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, are you upset they're killing you? I'm like, no, oh, you're gonna bring me back. And, so he went. and then like, about six months went by. <laughs> and like, the show was back on. And I'm like, hey, they didn't call, what? <laughs> I died. I'm, I'm dead. And then I got really sad. <laughs> It took a while. Oh man. Yeah. Well, as, as you know, when they shoot people on our show, they never come back. Oh. Yeah. oh thank you. It's awkward. <laughs> I just, I just I had a vision of you in the Superman suit with Lawrence Hamilton under there. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you can get those at my table. <laughs> yep. Kevin, what's your proud? What are you proud of? You know, I think I'm, what I'm. Uh, there's so much that I'm that I'm proud uh, about this show. Um, first and foremost, I think I'm, I'm proud of the relationships between us that we created, that we were able to create, and the atmosphere that you, Tom, helped set the standard for. And all of, you know, you set such a fun, professional, somewhat relaxed, um, safe area for all of us to come in and play. And so I'm very proud of that. It's something that I have taken to uh, uh, my, my next show that I'm on now, that I try to, I try to sort of follow in your footsteps. But the other thing that, uh, that I'm really most proud of is you guys and how much you have been able to attach yourselves to what we've done and appreciate the stories that you've told. So that's very <laughs> Work-wise, being able to, uh, you know, go off of what Kevin said, the relationships, you guys, um, you guys accepting me, being part of it, even though I was only there two seasons. Um, but on that note of, of coming back and playing a different character, and I, I think, from what you guys say convincingly, um, going from mom to Charlotte and making them two different people and making you care about each one individually um, makes me feel good. Um, I think, I mean, just picking up from generally, I think to do a show about the devil and for the overwhelming kind of feeling and message that came out of it to be about kindness and acceptance, I think that's quite cool. Yeah. And I'm just really proud. I don't think we set out to do that in the first instance, but what it became and how you guys became invested in it and how, you know, just the journey of the show on and off screen was not straightforward, but what it did along the way was just to bring a collective mindset of how people should be with each other. And, you know, to see people of like group, friend groups that have happened out of this, like the amount of people that come up and say, oh, well, meeting all these people, we've been talking to each other for the last six months, we've never met, this is the first time we meet. I just think it's wonderful. And like, we never set out to do that, but isn't it amazing what happens if you, if you go into something with the right intention? Anyway, there you go. Thank you. On that note, let's give it up for Kevin Alejandro. Peace out.